Welcome everybody back to the Attract and Stand Out podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Holly, and today I have with me Brooke Peterson. She is the founder and chief officer of Well Women Co. and author of Food Freedom, Stop Hiding and Uncover Who You're Meant to Be. She's also the host of the Well Women Co. podcast and the author of Align and Prosper Mastermind. She lives in Minnesota, where she is a wife to an amazing husband of eight years and has a daughter who's four years old. Brooke is on a mission to equip women to turn purpose into prosperity through authentic community and her online and in-person mastermind programs. Welcome, Brooke, to the, to the call. Thank you so much, Darlene. I'm honored to be here. It's so great to have you on. So give us a little bit of background to Brooke. Tell us a little bit about um, what your life looked like before you started your business and kind of how you came on this journey of starting yeah, I would love to. Um, I have been born with an entrepreneurial spirit and that manifested when I was a little kid, like I wanted to do three things that were all fairly entrepreneurial if I think about it. And the first thing was being a hairstylist, just setting my own schedule, creativity, working with people. The second was a personal trainer. I love physical fitness and athletics. And the third was always a missionary, like I wanted to help people travel for a purpose and on and on. And I grew up in a healthy household. And the first opportunity I had, the door opened was to go to cosmetology school. So long story short, I became a cosmetologist. The hairstylist was on the path, which I thought was to be a famous hairstylist and traveling and doing famous people's hair and doing runway shows and on and on. And then I had this crazy opportunity while I was on that path to go to this leadership school. It was a faith-based program um, in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm from Minnesota to do this leadership program. This was totally out of left field for me, but it kind of scratched that itch of like travel, adventure, missions. And so I put in my two weeks notice and took this crazy leap of faith to do this leadership program in Birmingham, Alabama. And I was there for three years and that totally changed my perspective. It changed my past. And all of a sudden I had more than ever this burning desire to make an impact and an income through my unique skills and expertise and gifts in order to help the people and the situations that I saw firsthand. In this three-year program, my my day-to-day was in the inner city of North Birmingham. I am a white girl from the suburbs, and I was thrown into this totally different culture with, um, you know, a lot of hardship that I had never seen before. I was thrown into that, and I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to make a difference um, in these circumstances, in these families, in these other business owners that are trying to make it out of this cycle of poverty. And so the the story goes on that I graduated from this program was amazing. It changed my life. I got married. I started with doing some direct sales, which was my school of business hard knocks. I do not have a business degree, any fancy degrees, but that um, I found a level of success in that. Um, Had my, my daughter passed off my book of business that I had built up um, through this direct sales employee benefits company. And I was just momming. And loving it, loving the transition into motherhood. I know that's not always the case, but when my daughter was about three months old, I had, I hit rock bottom. And what I mean by that is that although for the past 10 years, my life had looked fairly successful, I was pursuing dreams, pursuing passions, um, married the man of my dreams, excelling in a career, but hidden was my per- a personal struggle with an eating disorder. And no one knew it. You wouldn't be able to tell by looking at me. My husband was totally unaware, but it was a secret struggle, the secret bondage that I was dealing with for 10 years that really kept me in this place of limiting beliefs and in bondage and anxiety. I don't know if anyone else can relate to like crook. Maybe it's not from an eating disorder, but it's like constant anxiety, shame, guilt. My daughter was three months old. I had an epiphany of, oh my word. I cannot lead by example or um, be this type of example for my daughter in this way of living. Like you have kids, darling, like you know how, like, oh, you don't want your kids to struggle with what you did. And so I had this come to Jesus moment. 
I shared it with my husband, some close trusted mentors. I had a set a simple prayer and it was like this miraculous moment. And it happened in um, an instant. I was freed from this eating disorder of it over a decade. And so in a moment, I woke up the next morning, like, oh my gosh, I'm free. I don't know. It's just like a knowing I felt this weight release from me and, and my head and the anxiety. And I knew that the pain that I'd been secretly struggling with of health and wellness and wanting to step into my full potential for myself, all of a sudden became my platform literally overnight. So Darlene, that's when all of the things, the passions, the skill sets kind of came together. I, I wrote the book called Food Freedom, Stop Hiding and Uncover Who You're Meant to Be that you mentioned in the intro right here. So it's just a, my short testimony of what that actually looked like. But then it's also a radical guide with four principles of how any woman, no matter where they are in their health journey, can take their health to the next level. And really like me, like stop hiding and actually step into who you're created to be. So the book launch, the business launch, the podcast launch, the mastermind, everything birthed out of really this one experience. And I can honestly say I'm doing what I was created to do. I love it. I guess I have so much to learn, but that's, that's the start of my journey where I'm at now. I love that you mentioned like that it came out of like this time that you were home with your daughter and like three months in because like so many moms that I talked to like we love like we're on this new path we become moms and like some of us at least I'll speak for myself when I was a little girl like I dreamt of being a mom like that was like mm -hmm. one of like my big purposes in life was I couldn't wait to be a mom and but we get to that point where we're home with our children and we have that burning and that like desire to do something more. And we start to feel like we have like a bigger purpose that we need to fill. Yes. It yes. Helps, like so many women um, leave their job because they're a stay at home mom for a little while. And then they don't want to go back to like that corporate lifestyle. They're ready mm -hmm. to start their own business and start living from that place of passion. And we want to like be amazing role models for our kids and yeah. show them that you can do anything that's possible. So I love that you've been able to do that for you yourself and your business. Tell us a little bit then. So um, you uncovered that you had this like eating disorder. Can you tell us a little bit about like what were some of the signs that you started to notice for yourself to, that kind of helped guide you into this direction that you had something going on? Yeah, I mean, it was... I'm very aware that not everyone struggles with an eating disorder, but I, I am positive that everyone struggles with disordered thinking. And so for me, it was just the, I mean, obviously that the habit, what I was actually doing to my own body was not healthy. So that that's a sign. I think anytime you're hiding a behavior, thoughts, feelings, that's a sign. <laughs> um, I was not loving. I, I knew there was something more inside of me. But because of this disordered eating or this area in my life where I was not experiencing freedom, there's no way I could step into greater levels of entrepreneurship, of success, because of the guilt and shame. And I, I personally believe that there is a very real enemy that is out to kill, kill, steal, and destroy from us. And so, you know, it was that from that whole perspective of, you know, this vice in my life being used to stifle my potential, to stifle my calling. And again, seeing my three month old daughter and relapsing for the first time after she was born, I just had this like, no, putting the stake in the ground. Like I will not leave this legacy for her or her kids. And I know that I'm missing out on so much peace, joy, freedom in my own life because of the stupid thing that I, I feel like I cannot knock. So it's just a, it was my breaking moment. It was my rock bottom moment that I just decided I want to be free from this. I don't want to make excuses anymore. And then I, you know, took the hardest step that I've ever had to take to admit, right. And bring the, the, my best friend, my husband, my, my partner into this process. And, um, to get help and get freedom and the result of that is more than I can possibly imagine and we're just getting started so does that make sense yeah thank you so much for sharing that like I know it's hard sometimes to share some of those things that we've gone through in, the, in our past 
and I know like, yeah, not everybody struggles with an eating disorder, but we all have some kind of vice or some kind of something in yeah. our lives that comes from, whether it's from our childhood or yeah. um, what we saw from like our parents or how we were raised or like, there's always, yes. like, even like the most, like those of us that feel like we, we could totally have this, <laughs> like there's still mm -hmm. those things, those skeletons from our closet that come out at some point in our lives. And it's, I love that you were able to admit it because that's like half the battle right there is just acknowledging and admitting that you have yes. a problem that you need support and that you yeah. are ready for a change. And from there, that's when you're able to start doing the things that you need to do to, 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 to fill that hole that's inside of us, right? Like whatever we're struggling with to move forward and go through. So I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. And, and real quick, my, my title, my, when you own your own business, you can be whatever you want, right? <laughs> so I'm the founder and chief restoration officer. I call myself of Well Women Co. And the chief restoration officer is something, a process I had to go through of like restoring my original design. Every woman in her DNA has an original design, like factory settings almost. But then life happens, trauma happens, global pandemics happen. Right. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden that original factory setting gets mixed up and sometimes we just need someone to come alongside of us and like put, push the reset button so that we can discover as people as humans as women woman women who was i created to be what is the unique design and message on my life that only i can share and sometimes that manifests in the business other times that manifests through being an amazing mom and a confident partner, right? Um, so that that's that happened to me. I was like the Lord divinely pushed the reset button in my life, and now like that's why I'm created is to help other women like push the reset button back to original factory settings, so that all of a sudden life starts to get clear and make sense. And I know that's something that you are amazing at too, is helping women get that clarity so that we can take aligned action for sustained results. Yeah, no. And it's so true. Like there, we have to take that step forward for ourselves and move in the way, in that direction, the way that we need to. Yeah. What are some of the things then that you feel like have played like a big part? Like once you started your business and you kind of uncovered that you were ready to go on this journey and started exploring it, what were some of the things, um, that maybe obstacles that came up as you started your business that kind of got you stumped or things that you had to overcome during that process? Oh my gosh. Where do you want to start? I mean, still, Darlene, we were talking like having Zoom problems and technology problems. Like there is always a problem if you're an entrepreneur, like just get used to problems. But I also believe there's always a solution to that problem. And so writing the book, for instance, I had never written a book. I've never taken an advanced English class. So I knew nothing. So, so much of my journey has just been figuring it out. And a lot of times that feels daunting and overwhelming, especially when you're first starting. And so it's been so much mindset work of like, no, there's always a solution. I've also learned really quickly that my business can only grow to the measure that I grow. And so from the very start, I've had mentors, I've had coaches, I've bought courses from and I didn't have any money in my business, like zero profit, zero income. And I'm already investing thousands of dollars into, into what I felt called to do, which was write a book. And then, you know, there's stuff that happens with publishers. And anyways, um, so to, to break it down, it's been like just a relentless pursuit of finding out. And this will help someone like this will set someone free. There's always the strategy, right? We're always working towards the goal or a bigger vision. That's healthy. But at the same time, usually there's one thing, there's one next step we can take and that's all we can focus on. So it's been a lot of self-discipline in this journey of like, okay, I know where I'm going. Like I get a pic, I see a picture of it, but what is the next step I need to take towards that goal? And really being clear with yourself. Again, that's why I'm so obsessed with alignment. <laughs> like what in your business, what is the thing that most aligns with your passion, what you're called to do, your strengths and your skill sets, 
but then also aligns with the amount of income that you're desired to make, you know, like, because it, if you're having a business, like you have to make money too. Yes. I'm sure you attract, like I do, like a lot of heart centered business owners, right? So they're like, I just want to be in business and help. But then the money thing is scary. But reality is like, we need both to be successful and make the impact we're called to do. So like figuring out, and you know what, this global pandemic super authentically has been the the greatest gift to me personally than I could have imagined. And I understand there's extreme hardship. We've experienced some of that with in our own family and beyond. So I'm not unaware of the devastation that's happening, but I'm extremely grateful for the reset that it's been even for my business because it's helped clarify, okay, there's a lot of good things I was doing, but really only one thing in my business really, really matters at the end of the day. And I'm putting all my energy around that. So again, it's like a constant clarifying and it's a constant, what's the next thing? And what do I have to do to complete that thing? And so like on my planner, like it's right here, there's always three things every day that I want to accomplish. And sometimes, you know, most of the times one or two of them have to do with my business. Sometimes they're personal, um, but just a real self-discipline to like keep the main thing, the main thing. That was yeah. a long winded answer, but. Yeah, no. And I love that. That's exactly what I teach with my clients too, is like, we have these big, huge goals and they seem far-fetched or they seem like super hard and scary when it's like this big, huge goal. But when you just break it down into those bite-sized pieces and you just do the next step and like focus on what's the next thing you have to do to reach that goal, it makes yeah. it so much easier. You don't have to like have this, it doesn't, you don't, you can't just get there. Like as much as I wish we could just like no. sit down and like wish about it and dream about it. And all of a sudden we'd accomplish the goal. Like we have to do the baby steps and sometimes there's five baby steps and sometimes there's a hundred baby steps to get there. Yeah. But it's just one foot in front of the other and doing what you need to do next to get there is how yeah. it's so awesome. And I'll also say one more tip for this, especially for newbies. Okay. Like I recently was, <laughs> is a lot of times it's like, I just want to hire that out. I don't want to learn it. I don't want to learn email campaigns. I don't want to learn copywriting. I don't want to learn funnels, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? As an entrepreneur, I feel like it's so valuable to learn it for yourself as best you can. Because if you don't learn some of those basic skills to growing a business, then you're not going to be able to hire successfully. And I learned that just recently, like bringing someone on board. I'm like, okay, yep. I don't have my systems in place. You know, it's just, it's such a wake up call, even from a leadership perspective. So I know it's hard. It feels um, laborious, but it's extremely valuable. If you can push through that, those initial, at least foundational level of knowledge around some of these areas so that when you're ready to hire out, you can do it confidently because you can speak that same language. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I've wasted a, thousands of dollars shortcutting that. So that's why I'm hopefully saving someone thousands of dollars right now. Do it, for, do it yourself first. And maybe you disagree. Everyone can have their own opinion, but that's just my perspective. No, I, I'm completely on board with you. Like I feel like as a business owner, you need to learn how to do the things in your business so you can hire the right person. Yes. Because a lot of what, when hiring like a virtual assistant or somebody to come onto your team to help you out, like you're not necessarily hiring because they know how to do an email campaign. Like you want to hire like somebody who gets what you're trying to do. They see your heart and your passion yeah. and what you're trying to do so that they can be an extension of your business, not yeah. just somebody who comes in and does like the technical pieces to it. I would yeah. rather personally hire somebody who has just a loving, giving, big heart who wants to do amazing things and then teach them those skills because you can't teach the, um, the values. You can't teach the yeah. things internally, but you can teach them how to, you know, create a funnel. Like that's something you can mm -hmm. teach anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's more important to hire people that just have a huge heart and want to do good things and then teach them your system and yeah. your ways. Yeah. So yeah. So as a business owner, then like you have to know how to do those things for your business. Yeah. You know, outsource them because a lot of times you're going to be teaching that person what it is you need to have done in your business. So completely agree. And plus I'm the type of person that I want to learn how to do it so that if I have questions, like if I've already gone through it before, I know how to do it. So if somebody has a question or if, like I notice that something's not being done right, like I'm able to go in and help them fix it quicker because I'm not completely oblivious to the fact of like how to do that. It's something that mm -hmm. I've gone through and I'm at least one step ahead <laughs> mm -hmm. with it. So. Yeah. So 
I appreciate you sharing some of the things that you've overcome. Um, is there anything that you wish you would have known, like looking back the past couple of years, like, is, what would be like one thing that you wish you would have known that you could do now? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really good. The thing that comes to mind, I feel like because of some of the mentorship that I had, I did a fairly okay job at this, but I would have done even more. Um, and again, anyone, everyone has the right to their own opinions, but I would have done more before pretty. And what I mean by that is like, do quick launches with my list or the people already in my sphere of influence without worrying about my beautiful website or my beautiful branding being taken care of or making sure that my, yeah, my funnel is like perfectly working. Now, yes, I needed to have something ready to deliver that was valuable that would lead to the result that was promising. Like that is, you know, assumed, yeah. but I would have spent less time worrying about, yeah, like the, the pretty branding and I would have done more, like done more market research, meaning like just have more conversations with the people that I'm serving, figuring out like really what are their pain points and then created from that place. And again, I feel like I did that okay, but if knowing what I know now, I would have done that even more so and then continue to refine the branding and the messaging and the, you know, customer experience all around yeah. my community, my relationship with um, my clients, my potential clients. I so love that you mentioned that because like we're so in alignment when it comes to that. Like that's like the way that I look at branding is that it comes back to like your foundation of your business. Like it's not about your logo. It's not about your website. It's not about like mm -hmm. the colors that you choose. Like your brand is like you, the stories that you share, the experiences that you've had, the skills that you bring to the table, your ideal client, like getting super intimate and knowing who that ideal client is so that you can create messaging that markets to them directly. So that they're leaning yeah. in, they're excited to work with you because they know that you're their, pe your people, right? Like yeah. so often when we start our businesses, like we kind of glaze over, I feel like the ideal client work and make, like, we think we know our ideal client, but we don't really get to know them at a deeper level. And yeah. I know for myself, like I struggled the first two years of my business because I, d I thought I knew my ideal client, but I was kind of telling myself, like, I can help everybody, any kind of business. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have. Like, I'm a business coach. Mm -hmm. I can help you. And it was when I, like, had that aha moment when I sat down and journaled out, like, who my ideal client was and, like, what kept them up at night. What were their big struggles? Um, those are when, like, I was, like, I had, like, this aha moment. And I was, like, oh, my gosh. Like, now I know how to message to my client because I've gotten into their head more. I know more about them. Where in the beginning, I just left it super, you know, I was like, oh, my ideal client is between the ages of five and 300. And <laughs> her the white picket fence and um, her name is Susie and like all those things. Like I kind of had like this like very loosely ideal client work, but it was yeah. when I like sat down and got super clear and got really clear on the foundations of my business. That's when um, things really started to take off. So I'm glad wow. that you did that because- it happens so Darlene, often. that is that is gold. I hope everyone listening or watching this interview, you should probably stop and you should probably rewind two or three minutes and really let what she just said sink in because it is true. If you want more income in your bank account, you must provide more impact. How do you provide more impact? By solving a problem. How do you solve a problem? You have to know what the problem is. And so it's like, it's, it's the, it's the magic pill. <laughs> like if you want a quick fix or magic pill, that is it. And survey monkeys do giveaways, do phone calls, take people out to lunch. Like, I don't care what it is in my church. I, this past year, I led a small group going through my book, food freedom. Did I make any money of that? Off that? No, I gave some books away. But it was so valuable for me to facilitate this group of 10 to 15 women going through the book I had written and seeing the breakthroughs that they're having, seeing the, the revelations, seeing the, the, the questions come up, the, what really connected with them, you know, from their own words was so valuable for me 
to know that number one, I have something that impacts and that works. And number two, like exactly you're saying, I know how to speak to these people better now in order to serve them. And then money is just like a, a fruit. It's just like a side effect, you know, of those things. Yeah. And market, like the fact that you did like a study with other people and you were able to market research with them, like you're able to see like what questions were still coming up from them. Um, which like aha moments did they have and all those things you can use in your marketing going forward or for new content that you create, like maybe mm -hmm. even your next book, like you can identify like, oh, like people were able to get this, this and this out of the book, but they also had like a couple remaining questions maybe about how to solve this problem that might come up now. And then you can mm -hmm. start to create content that will fill those holes for them. And it helps us as business owners, I feel like, when we're able to talk to real life clients, because that's when we get yeah. like those aha moments. That's where I get um, content ideas to, for a blog post or for a video or for a new program or a piece that's missing maybe from my program that I didn't know was missing. Mm -hmm. it's during those conversations that you're like, oh, it's like you're waiting for those aha moments so that you can do the next thing to yeah. take the business to the next level. Yeah. So I love that. So tell us a little bit about your business now. How is it that you work with clients? Yes. Yeah, so right now my business looks like the, our five month align and prosper mastermind. So this is an online and in-person immersion program for those who are local number one, or we have a annual retreat where people come for a weekend and it's so powerful. So I walk women through this process of getting into alignment with what they're called to do. They know it in their gut, they know it in their spirit of assessing their unique strengths, their story, and then activating them into the business or into the ministry or, or into being a more confident mom. It's really um, all over the board. And so that's our five month masterminds, Align and Prosper Mastermind program. I have the book, Food Freedom. Um, and then I have a podcast as well, where the, of course that's a lot of free resources and content. So the mastermind is what I'm most excited about now. It's getting the most, um, traction for the women I'm working with. And, um, yeah, that's what's going on in my world. And again, again, there, there was more going on pre pandemic, <laughs> but this has really helped me refine like, okay, this is really what leads to the biggest transformation anyways for my clients. And so we're just, we're just ramping that up more and, you know, postponing some other, the live events and things we were doing. Yeah. And it's, it's true. Like all of our businesses have pivoted in some kind of way, maybe not huge pivots, like where you're doing something totally new or different in your business. Mm -hmm. but we're having mm -hmm. a really look at our business model and make sure that it's strategic for the times that we have right now. Yeah. And um, I've been doing the same thing. Like I've been looking at my schedule and like pairing it back a little bit, like kind of pruning the activities that maybe I was just doing because I felt like I should do those. Oh, yeah. Or, um, maybe they weren't really in alignment anymore with where I'm at now in my business. And I've been able to structure it back to where it feels like a better schedule for me to keep each week, especially while we're balancing homeschooling our kids and yeah. spouses working from home or, you know, just living this new way. And it's been a beautiful thing to watch. Like, mm. I, I agree with you, like you were saying earlier, like a lot has happened bad because of the pandemic that's going on. But I think yeah. so many people are able to kind of take a look at their, a hard look at their life and figure out, you know, what is it they want to really be doing? How are they actually right. showing up? Like what areas are they overspent? <laughs> like we're like either financially mm -hmm. or um, emotionally or, you know, physically, like a lot, I know a lot of moms, like their kids were in two and three, four different sports yep. before and they were fried. They were exhausted. They weren't having family meals anymore. They were on the go constantly. They felt like they lived out of their cars and like everybody's been able to take the step back, whether it's for your business or your personal life and just kind of yeah. reassess and identify the things for you that are working and that bring you joy and that you want to do. And then yeah. what are those things on your list that you just kind of have been doing because you felt like you had to, to give back in some way or yeah. you want to keep up with the Joneses or like whatever yeah. that is. So I do agree that we're all going to be so much better when we are able to kind of go back to whatever this new normal life is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Like kind of gone back down to like the bare bones of it and we're able to kind yeah. of figure out who we are and who we want to be and what yeah. activities actually light us up versus which ones yeah. were we just doing because we felt like we had to. Yeah. So, yeah. So 
what what would you say has been one of the like best ways that you've been able to stand out online compared to other people who do maybe similar work that you do or some version of it? Yeah, that's a really good question. It goes back to that market research question, kind of. Um, but I know really two things. That's maybe my programmer who I'm a part. And the first thing is the holistic health component. So I really got my start as a health coach. So I started several years ago, primarily around nutrition and fitness. And even from the perspective I write about in the book, it has always been, I want to be healthy in order to live the life I was called to do for the long run, right? So there's always been a deeper purpose there, but now transitioning to um, helping women really step into that in particular, there's in, in our mastermind, for instance, we have a whole month before we even get to like the nitty gritty, we have a whole month of a nutrition detox where we do some digital detoxing. Like we're really caring, resetting our bodies first before we get into some of this deeper work or strategy. Cause, cause I personally value health, um, so much. And I believe that when we're well, then we can have a higher level of contribution that leads to a greater level of prosperity that we want anyways. So it's kind of that holistic approach. Um, and then the second piece, I believe that would set me apart is really my faith. And so I see the world from a biblical perspective. Again, my, my encounter that I had of experiencing freedom from this decade plus eating disorder had everything to do with my relationship with God. And I know that doesn't align or resonate with everyone, um, but I really attract the women who are craving to understand how do I engage my faith into my business? How do I engage my faith in my health? How do I engage my faith in my home? Um, and they really want to partner, um, yeah, their faith in every area of their life. And so, you know, I, I train from that perspective. Um, I consult from that perspective and it's led to pretty, pretty unique breakthroughs because I don't just rely on my own wisdom, my own, my own strength. I really tap into, um, you know, some, something greater that I believe we have access to. So again, I know that doesn't align with everyone, but, um, it's my joy and honor to, to work with the type of women who are looking for that sort of support. And I, um, yeah, present everything I do from that perspective. I, I love that you mentioned that because so many, like, it's like that fine line, right? Especially when we talk about religion and about God and the universe or like whatever it is that you believe, like that's one of the things that does set you apart though, because you're going to attract the right type of people with the same values mm -hmm. as you, the same people that are going to be able to relate are going to be like brought to you. And then you're also going to kind of repel some people which yep. is perfect because those are not the people that you want to work with. And yeah. so I love when you take a stand for yourself and you um, are comfortable, especially when it comes, you know, there's so many topics that some people say, like, don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion, like, that those things are like no-nos. But mm -hmm. if that's part of who you are, like, yeah. shout out from the rooftops, like, that's yeah. what's going to make you, you. And that's what's also going to attract the right people to you as well. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because your point of view is your point of view and that's what mm -hmm. makes you special. It makes you unique. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. I think that's such a good point too. You brought up of like that whole authenticity piece, you know, it's like, be who you are, be who you are and like attracts like, <laughs> so you are, you are going to attract what is going on in cult what you're cultivating inside of you, which is also a great, um, a great what I'm trying to say sign so if you're attracting people to you that are like I don't like working with these kind of people then that's a great indicator of like hmm, maybe there's some things that I need to address that's going on inside of me that I I'm not able to see right now and then that's when you partner with people like yourself or myself and you know get get great community around you so that we can work on some of those blind spots um, so that we, we are attracting, um, the people that we love to be inspired by and work with. Yeah. And it just helps you kind of narrow down your, um, 
your ideal client too, because you're going to be able to bring people that are a faith-based community to you. And that's who you want to work with. So I just, I just love that you brought that up. I think it's so important. I think it's, we don't talk about it um, enough, like sharing our point of views or taking Mm -hmm. a stand for something like maybe in your industry, if there's something Mm -hmm. that you stand for that other people talk about it differently, like it's okay hear that because other people are going to be able to resonate and um, have that mirror effect because they're going to be like, yeah. oh, you actually are like saying this in a way that makes sense to me and yeah. I can, and that's what's going to bring them in. That's how I think you stand out more and you're able to attract the right people to you when you do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I'm getting encouraged. This is like a nice little coaching call. I'm getting <laughs> a little bonus. Thanks. <laughs> but it's so, like, so many people are afraid. At least, like, I feel like I talk to so many people, like, a lot of my clients when they come to me, like, as we start to uncover what their story is and who they want to show up as when they are standing out online and attracting their ideal clients, like, they're almost afraid sometimes to show that part of themselves. Because what if, you know, like, with your, like, with, we're we'll talking we'll talk about faith-based, like, what if like I attract people that aren't faith-based and then they get to know me and they like me and then all of a sudden they learn that I am a believer and then all of a sudden like now they don't want to work with me and I'm like heck yeah like goodbye <laughs> mm-hmm. and they don't share the same point of view like wh- like we start these businesses because we have a passion for something and we want to be able to show up and serve the world in the way that we want to we're not doing it for anybody else like your mm-hmm. business has to be centered around you and if you can't authentically show up and be yourself then why be in business? Like you can go work for somebody else and it would yeah, be great right. to go yep. do a job for somebody else versus being the owner of your company where you're showing up and having to do all these things. So yeah, yeah. like it's, I, it's, I, I get on my soapbox when it comes to that because so many mm-hmm. people try to like hold their self back or like mm-hmm. not share all of their selves because they think that they're going to turn some people off and like make people not want to work with them but I found the exact opposite. Like the more that you show up and share your values and who you are, that's when your business starts to like scale and blossom. Wow. Wow. So good. But yeah, enough of my soapbox. (laughs) I love it. I'm learning. Yeah, Yeah, it's good. uh, Tell me how you define success for you and your business. Yeah. One word. It is transformation. That's it. If Women are um, digesting my content, whether it's a book, whether it's our mastermind, and it's not leading to some sort of transformation in their mindsets, in their health, um, in their confidence, then I'm not doing my job. But if there's transformation, if there's testimonies, then that means that there's fruit from what I am producing, which means that it's success <laughs> and there's impact. So it's, ab- it absolutely boils down to transformation and then everything else, you know, financially, um, you know, momentum wise, business wise, it falls into place, but it's, if there's no transformation and there's some serious issues going on that needs to be addressed. So that's what, that's, what's been so encouraging too, of like, you know, going through the process and doing, doing coaching calls and doing group coaching and hearing for myself the breakthroughs, the things that are being launched, the, the health, getting your period back, getting off the pill for over 30 years, like just so many testimonies helps us as business owners, no matter what you do, keep going because you know, that's making impact. So, you know, there's other people that need that same. Yes. Those same keys. Yeah. I love that transformation because you can have like so many identifiers in your business for where you're seeing transformation. Like you share, like you can see transformation in yourself for how you're growing your business. You can see the transformation that happens with your clients and like what they're able to do now. And you're able to transform more lives by the income that you're providing because you're able to give back more and do more in so many ways. So I love that that's part of like your key to success. It's just the transformation that it brings. Well, this has been so fun, Brooke. Before we kind of start to wrap up, um, I like to do what I call rapid fire questions at the end. Oh boy. The same questions to all my but okay. I love finding out these little bits about people because I think it shows so much of who we are as people. So my first question for you is, do you have a morning routine? And if so, what does it look like? Yeah, okay. Pretty simple. I wake up and I move my body like immediately. 
and in quarantine land it's been like I literally have my jammies on and I'm downstairs unless I'm going for a run <laughs> so I have to move my body then I have breakfast and it's always like a high quality protein shake something just like quick delicious I look forward to it daily and then I have my time where I sit down and journal um, I read read something encouraging uplifting usually a little bit of scripture and I just like sit and be a little bit and this is fairly new because usually I am a morning person so I want to be have my most productive time in the morning but it's been a posture for me to lean into a posture of rest and ditching the hustle mentality and really believing that I can do more by doing less so those three things movement eating <laughs> Um, healthy food, and then some sort of, you know, prayer, meditation, journaling, like reflection. Awesome. I love that you do that. It's very similar to what my morning looks like as well. So, and then thinking back, um, like all the people that have been in your life, whether people that you know, or influencers, who has made the biggest impact on where you're at today? Oh boy, that is, how do you end the world to answer that question? Um, I will just say my mom. I mean, Lord bless moms. <laughs> she has been the constant support, constant cheerleader, constant prayer warrior. And I firmly believe if it was not for her faithfulness that I probably wouldn't be talking to you today. So give it, give the credit to my mom. <laughs> Love our mamas. <laughs> yeah. They always make such a huge impact in our lives. Yeah. And then, so do you have a happy spot? Like when you need to like reset mm. and recharge, like where do you like to go? What do you like yeah. to do? kind of like yeah connect with yourself again it's like moving so right now it's summer it's spring in Minnesota and so I'm running a lot more we're hosting a run in a couple weeks and even now I'm like I need to move I need to get up so if anything it's like walking moving being outside um exploring new places for sure is my place to recreate yeah. love that and then your last question um and I know that it's hard to do. It's hard to ask this question right now because of what the world has going on. But if I could give you an airline ticket and you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Yeah, um, I would say Israel. Yeah, Israel. Just to like reconnect to that land. It's close to like Greece, which is another place I want to be. Um, the Mediterranean is a place that's on my top, top of my list to go visit. Um, yeah, so that's what I would say. Awesome. And if that offer, if that offer still stands, like I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll risk that. <laughs> yeah, we we'll go all, for it. We're working on that. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just be like, where do you want to go today? And we just have oh. to buy us a ticket and then we could go. <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. It's a great question. I think travel is so important, like just to see the world and to like experience yeah. life in different cultures and different and see things from different points of view yeah such a cool way to do it yes. well Brooke this has been so much fun having you on the podcast thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to be here tell our listeners where they can find you where do you like to hang out the most yeah super simple Instagram is kind of my main jam but you can find me on Facebook or my website and it's all at well women co well Women Co. I love to be on Instagram. You can find my podcast, Well Women Co. Podcast, wherever you like to stream. Um, and I'd love to connect, hear what Nugget, you know, spoke to you, whether it was through Darlene or myself today and connect on Instagram yeah, awesome. or Facebook. Yeah. I will make sure we have all those um, linked below as well so that you guys can follow Brooke there. And then I think you have a free gift for everybody as well. Can you tell us, tell our listeners what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I would love, I have a free mini email course, it's five days, five minutes or less a day. And it's called a mini align and prosper course. And literally the point of this five day mini email course is to help you in five days, get clarity of where are you going and then take the next step of aligned action. So then five days, you are confident about where you're headed and you actually have some actionable steps to step into that. So they can find that at bit.ly backslash free well course. Um, again, that's on my Instagram or Facebook as well. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brooke, for being a part of the podcast. I appreciate you.
Yeah, I'm honored, Darlene. So much fun to hang out with you today and learn from you today. <laughs> Thank you. I always love the conversations that come up because we get so much from each other as we're yeah. having conversations. So thank you so much.